John with Draco Broadcast, and today we're going to be looking at the MagicQ teleprompter software, the newer version. Um, today we're working with um, a Mac. This software is available on both Mac and PC, but today we're looking at the Mac version. So let's just do a walkthrough on uh, everything from getting it loaded up to running your first script. So I'm going to open up Chrome here, and I'm on the MagicQ teleprompter software page, which you, which you can get to by going to this link right up here uh, in the search bar, magicu.com slash magicu-software.html. All right, so once you're on this page, you're going to click either the Mac download button or the PC download button, whichever uh, system you're using. So I click Mac download, and it's going to give me this file down here. I'm in a Chrome browser. Yours might look a little bit different if you're using Firefox or something. Um, from here, I can just click open. It's going to give me a new folder in my finder, which if I open up, I'm going to see this application icon right here. If I double click that, now I already have it installed, so you're going to see a different window than I see, but if I open this, it is going to just go directly to the software, right? It's going to go directly to the software. What you're going to see is an activation window where it's going to prompt you to enter your email address or register as a trial or if you've already purchased a license or, or what have you. Um, you can register for a seven-day free trial just using your email address. It'll send you the activation link, and you can activate your software from there. So this is the software that you're going to see when you first load it up. You're going to have a uh, screen with a script that simply says the word up. And a lot of people are like, why do you have a script that just says the word up? It's because, um, you know, a lot of times you're working with mirrored text or flipped around text or whatever when you're using a teleprompter. So it's very handy to have just something that will give you reference. And in this case, the word up works pretty well. So um, the word up displays in the script window. If you're upside down, then you'll know it pretty quickly. If you're mirrored or backwards or whatever, you'll know that pretty quickly. Um, you can see here that this all looks right. Um, we have two windows here. And what these are are your talent window and your operator window. Um, you're going to use one window on your operator screen and one window on your talent screen. Your third window down here at the bottom is your control panel. And uh, what this is going to do, we'll, go, we'll get into all of these different um, icons and what they mean in just a minute here. But this is where you're going to do all your controlling from. So the first thing that we need to do is identify which window is our talent window and which window is our operator window. You're going to do that by clicking this icon right here with the two gray squares and the arrow. If we just toggle this a couple of times, you're going to see pretty quickly that your talent window is appearing and disappearing. Um, so this window, your talent window, is going to be dragged off of your main operator window off screen into your teleprompter, into your talent window. And now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with that, um, just Google extended displays. You're going to want to make sure that your computer is set up uh, with extended displays instead of mirror displays. So once you have extended displays set up, you're going to drag this over into your prompter monitor, which will be your extended display. So just for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off to avoid any confusion. And I'm going to show you how to load up your first script. Now, a uh, question we get a lot of times is, can I use Word doc files? Can I use all sorts of these different kind of files? And the answer to that is no. You can use text files and RTF files. And what I have over here, uh, this is a MagicQ script sample in text format, plain text format. And if I just double click it, that's not going to work because it's just going to open it up in my basic text editor. But if I click on this little folder icon right here, this is going to bring up my finder, and from there on my desktop, I can see that my MagicQ script sample is right here. So now if I click open, there's my script, and it automatically starts playing in my operator window. Now, if I want it to stop because I'm not ready yet, I have this play stop button right here. It's the blue uh, stop play button that toggles back and forth when you click it. If I want to go back to the beginning, I can just use my mouse wheel and scroll back up to the top of the script. And if I need to make any edits to this script after I have it loaded into the prompter, this icon lets me do that. If I click the pencil, it's going to open up my text editor and I can go ahead and edit right here uh, within the text edit software and then save it and it will reflect in, in my teleprompter. The last icon that we haven't looked at yet is this little save feature where any changes that we've made 
to our, our script, we can go ahead and save them here as a new text file. Okay, that's all pretty straightforward. Uh, the next thing you have is this center column of different options and checkboxes, right? They're pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, the background, you can select either black on white or white on black if you need to, um, if you need to change the, the, the color scheme here, white on black, black on white, whichever you're most comfortable with. Um, you have these reverse flip buttons, right? And what are these for? Well, teleprompters are designed around uh, bouncing your, your script off of a mirror. So once you have that talent window open, right? Once you have that talent window open, uh, and you probably noticed that we have two different scripts now here. We'll touch on that in just a second. But once you have that open, you can click this reverse flip talent window and it will reflect properly. Um, it'll reflect pr uh, properly so that it will display on your mirror correctly. Now, a lot of people ask, why do you have this first option that says reverse flip operator window? Like, why would you need to reverse flip your operator window? And the answer for that is some people are their own operator and talent at the same time, and they need to be able to have the control panel as well as the one control window on the same screen. Um, so if that's you, then you probably won't even need the talent window at all. Um, you could just get away with using the one window, flip it within your teleprompter, and just control the entire thing, um, if you're that good at multitasking, control the entire thing while you're reading the script. So that's why that option is there. The last thing that you have here is the ability to make your talent window full screen by clicking this button. It will blow it up to full screen, and then you can just shrink it back down. You can also manually, and most people do this, manually adjust the size of your different windows from your operator window to your talent window, etc. All right, going back to why we have two different scripts loaded up here. If, you're, if you load a script with your talent window closed and then you open your talent window, it will, not, it will not load into both of those windows. The reason for that is because if you need to change scripts while your talent is still reading the previous the previous script, it allows you to load a new script into your operator window while the talent window is still running. Um, so if we need to update that, we can open up this script sample file again, and when we open it this time, you're going to see that it will now reflect in both windows. So um, that's a cool little feature of the software because if you are the operator and your talent is, is um, you know, still reading the script that you were on and you need to load up the next script, you can do that. Um, without without messing with your talent uh, right off the bat. So there you go. That's what that does. We're going to turn off our talent window again and go back over here. Now the last section are these text options over here. Um, again, this is pretty straightforward. Um, you have these sliders. This will control things like font size. So I can blow up my font to be huge. Now you see what happens here. If I make the font too large, we're going to start getting um, overlapping of our text. And what you can do to adjust for that is use this line height slider. And if I adjust the line height slider, now I'm spreading apart the line height here so that not only can I have large font text, I can also make the, uh, the, the lines work well. So if you need, um, if you need larger text, uh, that's how you accomplish that. The font size and then the line height slider. We're going to reset this really quick. Bring this back down. Your next slider here is your outer margin. So depending on what kind of prompter you're using, um, you might have a little bit of uh, margin that you need to accommodate for because of the glass um, or, or something like that. So you can do that <clears throat> using the outer margin slider. You can kind of crunch in the entire display here. Now this brings in your, your eye lines as well. Um, that'll bring your eye lines in along with all of the text. If you want to make an adjustment to the margin without messing with your eye lines, use the text margin slider. So some people might want their text to be inside of the eye lines instead of overlapped by the eye lines. Um, little preference, but if you if you want to have your eye lines not overlapping the text, use the text margin slider. If you want to bring the whole thing in, use the outer margin slider. Um, the last two are these two over here, scroll speed and eye line width. You saw me adjust the eye line width just a second ago, but this will make your eye lines just a little bit bigger or smaller. Um, on the PC version, you can adjust the height of the eye lines 
Um, on the Mac version, you will be able to in our next update. Uh, scroll speed is last. If we're playing our script, you can adjust your scroll speed here. If you need to slow down or speed up, you just click and drag this slider here to speed up your text. Now, one thing to note here is that you see this value, this number, can go down to zero, and that's full stop. And that's full stop. If you go to the left below zero, you'll start scrolling backwards. So you have like a reverse function here. Um, if you need to jump back or, or just kind of scoot back, you can use that. You can also use your scroll wheel on the operator window just to jump around. So if, you're, if your script is playing here and your talent's reading, and maybe they're behind or they're getting ahead, you can jump back just like that or jump forward by just kicking the script down like that using your scroll wheel. Um, so you have options. You can use the slider or you can use your scroll wheel to jump um, just to keep up with where your talent is in the script. Okay, so that is the general overview of how to download, install, and load up and use your first script in the MagicU teleprompter. If you have any questions outside of the scope of this video, feel free to email us at support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at Draco Broadcast, D-R-A-C-O, broadcast.com. Again, my name is John, and thanks so much for watching today.